Buenos días a todas. Good morning, a todos. everyone. I'm uh, Valentina Morales. I'm a support specialist in the family farming team, the uh, FAO for Latin America and the Caribbean. I'll be with you as a chair. Welcome, everyone. This uh, first uh, series of uh, dialogues of knowledge and practices in family farming. And before we start, let me remind you that we have simultaneous interpretation into Spanish and English and Portuguese, which you can find at the bottom bar of the Zoom. We're trying to promote the collaborative learning and the transfer of knowledge among governments, farmers, and other stakeholders to make visible the contributions from a family farming as part of the transformation agenda of agri-food systems uh, following the global plan for family farming of the uh, decade of the United Nations for family farming and according to the Santiago's uh, chart in, 19, in, in 2022. We'll go in through the technical platform managed by the regional FAO office for Latin America and the Caribbean, supported by the family farming and parliamentary network uh, platform. All these uh, discussions will be available in the technical platform and uh, you will have, you'll gain access to it uh, through our uh, webpage. All these dialogues uh, will be articulated with global articulation agendas to make visible the experiences to strengthen family farming, considering three main topics. Today is the contribution of family farming in the environmental and climate agenda. Second topic is investment of family farming and the role of the sector for an inclusive rural transformation and family farming and the building of sustainable markets. As I said, this first edition organized with a specialized meeting of family farming from Mercosur, REAP, through the pro tempore chair from Brazil, and the National Coordination and the Family Farming Ministry. We will develop the potential of agroecology and family farming to face the challenges in this uh, transformation agenda, especially those uh, climate and environmental challenges. This uh, first meeting is broken down into three sessions. First was uh, last uh, 20, uh, September 27th, and when the discussion was focused on the principles and practices of agroecology and in identifying the challenges and opportunities to promote this agenda. This session we will, will focus on agroecology and institutionality, and we'll have presentations on progress and public policies from Mercosur countries and how these interrelate with family farming. Third session, next uh, October 31st, we'll have presentations of experiences from all over the world to discuss the potential to try agroecological transition in family farming. Today, we have uh, six uh, speakers. Lautaro Vizcay is the Technical Secretary of RIA Mercosur, an introduction of the Agroecology Committee, then a presentation from four countries, Chile, Paraguay, Argentina, and Uruguay, on the focal point of the Agroecology Commission of REAF in their government, and a presentation by Carlos Mermot, who will present on the Confederation of Organizations of Family Farmers, expand extended uh, Mercosur, Copro Fam, on the transition towards ag agroecological systems in family farming. Then we will have a Q&A period to deep dive into the presentation, so, so please take notes of those questions that you may want to ask, and uh, you can always ask, you can always use the chat pod, there's a Q&A 
En honor al box, tiempo, uh, les pido a todos los panelistas que so, respeten um, los tiempos asignados. Por favor, no se olviden de los tiempos asignados. Y yo les voy a dar un minuto para que tengan un minuto antes de empezar su presentación. Daremos paso a comenzar este, este diálogo el so día de hoy. Y adelante, el autor Obiskay, secretario de la Autaro Obiskay, es el técnico secretario de RIAF. Buen día. Buen día. Buen día. Presidencia Pro Tempore del Brasil. To the Gracias, pro tempore Valentina. chair of Brazil. Thank eh, you, Valentina. The Specialized Meeting of Family Mercosur. Farming of Mercosur. It's a formal agency of Mercosur, a specialized uh, agency in the design and proposals of uh, uh, public policies, which are differentiated for. Uh, family farming in the extended Mercosur. This specialized uh, meeting of 2004, nearly 20 years already, has dealt a través del diálogo político with, uh, through political dialogues of uh, farm, family farming and farmers association and governments to drive the institutionality eh, regulatory frameworks and public policies and through programs and funding for uh, the sector the main ethos eh, agroecology has been part of the whole political dialogue the process of this year we have Mercosur We, we have uh, well, more teams, and this agroecology commission is very new, established by late 2020. Uh, I was uh, that was proposed and dialogue uh, as part of a specific uh, commission on climate change, but. Given the need of uh, working on this decade of uh, family farming, the requirements for farmers' associations and governments for the need to change agri-food uh, food systems into fair, just systems with a balance. Uh, transition towards the ethos of uh, family farming and practice, ethics, value, community, history. Then we address agroecology, and, and, and the governments have also seen the opportunity to strengthen and building the uh, regulatory framework so that agroecology can I can Apoyada move también forward, marco global, supported the globally Unidas, from the United Nations and all the United Nations agency that since 2008 they have confirmed with the government how agroecology has the ability to help us rethinking territories, rethinking production, consumption, and distribution, and helping us to contribute to 2030 agenda. So REAF, of course, had to take these initiatives from uh, organizations and the experiences and practices uh, being used for, for, for several years in uh, farmers' uh, movements uh, for so many years and translate this into a public policy in, in, in different countries. So we have institutional frameworks in every country, um, developments, specific programs that have been designed, that are being designed uh, in order to change agri-food systems. Like Valentina said, today we will have a group of countries, full members of RIAF, Casio from the MTA. I'd like to thank Casio, the pro tempore chair from Brazil, will help us to deal this such an important topic, which requires a substantial development at the technical and political level in the region. We will have full member countries uh, will be presenting, uh, plus Chile, which is an associate country, with initiatives. And finally, we have asked Coprofar to share with us the, the, what they have done in the last uh, few years. Last but not least, Valentina, for us, the RIAF Mercosur colleagues, our idea is to set the groundwork uh, to our, our foundations, which, as you know, is to sign recommendations, decisions, 
to contribute to guidelines in our Mercosur countries, which is part of the national plans of the, the decade of uh, family farming, will become a more cooperation uh, among governments to reach the territories. This is we, this is a huge opportunity to move forward in uh, political guidelines and. Uh, Today, it's part of that build-up of agendas we need to agree on the next uh, coming guidelines and recommendations that Mercosur will offer. So, thank you for this cycle to move forward. And uh, from these experiences, we can agree on the best designs required in the region to scale up uh, agroecology. And let, uh, let me close by saying that for REAF Mercosur, agroecology, climate change, uh, genetics, uh, native seeds, land, think in the territory, uh, territorial planning and the environment goes, uh, it's uh, part of uh, differentiated public policies into agroecology transition. We know about the crisis, the food crisis, not only not only war and volatility of prices, but we also know that uh, we share here the problems with the food, uh, we had access to uh, healthy food. So, so whatever we can contribute uh, from family farming uh, will uh, contribute to uh, uh, the 39 REAF uh, in Brazil. So thank you. Thank you, Lautaro, for the kind introduction, for the context and the goals of the presentations we'll be listening to today, and for emphasizing the importance of uh, moving on social and political guidelines. So now let's go for the presentations of all four countries. The first presentation is uh, from Chile, Sebastián Borges, the focal point of the agroecology. Uh, commitment from the Instituto de Desarrollo Agropecuario in Chile. You have 15 minutes. I'll let you know one minute before the 15 minutes. Thank you, Valentina. Thank you, Lautaro. Greetings to all the focal points and the Brazilian pro temporary chair. Let me start my presentation by sharing my screen. You let me know if you can see my screen. Sí, lo vemos. Yes, we can. Puedes poner okay. el compartir con pantalla. Ya, yeah, perfecto. Lo vemos. Sí. Adelante. Ahí queda bien. Perfecto. Bueno. Eh, okay. A ver, para para contarles eh, cuáles han sido los avances de, de, de Chile en, uh, en, are en the la, steps en materia de política pública. Chile has adopted in public eh, policy tools supporting eh, agroecology. Tengo que referirme básicamente I will a, basically uh, touch upon what INDAP has been familiar. doing in family y, farming. Y en este caso, dado el, dado el tiempo que tengo, eh, given the short time I have, voy a referirme específicamente I will address a, a, a transition, transition towards a sustainable nuevo, agriculture. Que, this is a new program este año, launched uh, this year. Implemented. However, I will address eh, other initiatives uh, on eh, agroecology, son, which son are also quite important as INDAP. part of uh, what uh, INDAP eh, is doing para in Chile. Iniciar, eh, importante decir que, que el, el enfoque agroecológico, the agricultural approach or sustainable agricultural farming has been, has been going on in Chile for quite some time. Civil societies, NGOs contributing to the process, and of course, Los distintos gobiernos a través de los the años también han ido gradualmente have, este uh, enfoque added en, this en approach de, su, de sus políticas. Some on their Sin embargo, However, eh, no ha sido hasta ahora, digamos que eh, only now, hasta, hasta hace pocos pocos años que el tema ha tomado más ago, fuerza dada la demanda topic, de, la, de la ciudadanía y en general del, del mundo, uh, la tendencia mundial. Became more important. Eh, this is a global trend. 
y trabajar con más fuerza en Working estos temas y, stronger eh, y on plantear these la necesidad de, and, uh, de fomentar the este tipo de, eh, de producción, of, uh, ¿cierto? producción basada production. en principio, principio agroecológico, de, uh, agroecology based or de una manera más, más based principles, in a more specific que, manner. That's why eh, en este en este gobierno, el gobierno del de presidente uh, Boric, current administration eh, se, se puso bastante énfasis en, en, en este tipo de, de producción para la agricultura familiar. Y uh, todo eso eh, nace, eh, nace esta propuesta, este, este programa de fomento de proposal, these, uh, nuevo de INDAP, que aborda específicamente by INDAP, el, eh, la transición agroecológica de la agricultura familiar. Of family farming. Entonces, eh, so, para dar un, un, un contexto... Eh, el, to put el things into a context, the Ministry of Agriculture eh, today has uh, con, con la, uh, guidelines which are quite consistent with the current uh, climate change de, scenario, de la, de the climate crisis and economic que, and social crisis the world is going through. Y esos, y esos se and those se, guidelines se de ocho ejes have... Uh, ya, aquí oh, solamente eight, uh, voy a, main topics voy a that resaltar me just los que address tienen que ver más con la sustentabilidad y con, con la agroecología, sustentabilidad, eh, la, la seguridad y la soberanía alimentaria y el fortalecimiento de la cultura and familiar y la medicina. Los otros también son importantes, también tienen que ver con la agroecología, pero lo que son los otros son los más importantes, pero lo que son los más importantes, pero lo que son los programas que les voy a mostrar. Closer, more related to el, the problem I will be sharing you. The new program eh, of uh, programa transition into sustainable agriculture, eh, TAS. Que se crea, como les decía, this ante, was uh, ante la necesidad de put together because of the need de of increasing among our farmers, el de increasing que, the number of farmers. Que, que manejan, eh, sistemas managing sustentable sustainable que production systems productivos, including sustainable practices or este of sustainable management. This program de, de aim, este aims at uh, providing uh, in-depth users eh, a specialized uh, advising plus para, economic eh, incentives este for this uh, productive ¿no? transformation uh, system by adding, as I said, a series of sustainable management techniques or eh, agroecologically eh, based uh, the country so that, for that they are technically supported but they're also supported uh, uh, with the resources to implement these changes this is a very uh, uh, specialized uh, uh, approach as part of the uh, program es que este programa, Yet another element eh, is that this uh, va a buscar, eh, program también el aims impacto, at decir, assessing eh, the impact. That is, es iniciar con the idea is to en, start en el, with the farmers, digamos, uh, que se whatever the sustainability uh, stage they are, evaluar, eh, diagnosticar ese, ese primer diagnose y uh, this stage, que, and then eh, once que se hayan realizado las recomendaciones y los manejos the recommendations are offered and uh, cuál, cuál ha sido for sustainable cuál ha sido management esa, to see what the, the impact of those practices has been, dentro, dentro uh, which is del, a, del a del new approach uh, uh, for INDAP's eh, uh, program. Acá solamente decir que, est que este programa apunta the This program has SDG. It's consistent with the SDG goal. As a INDAP, we, we are consistent. We follow the SDGs. We have audits uh, in, in place to have uh, our focused on these uh, global goals. INDAP has a strategy. 2023-2030, also considering sustainable, resilient management, producing more and better with the lower 
uh, environmental impact. Uh, there are other strategic uh, axes also supporting the sustainable farming, inclusive markets, uh, participative and associative transformation, which is critical for the marketing of these products and the strengthening and modernization of INDAP, which is, uh, which is an in-house internal transformation that aiming at these type of uh, approaches. Um, what is the big challenge we want to address through this tool? Through TAS, we try to address the implementation of public policy related to family farming and climate, uh, climate change adaptation. And among the most important policies today, in our country is the national policy for rural development up to 2024. The national plan for uh, climate change, which is being updated, and the national strategy for sovereignty for food security. These are the three main policies or, or tools, macro tools, El, el programa TAS, así como otros otros uh, programas, otras iniciativas, the, uh, otros, TAS, otros, uh, as well as dando, other programs, are y, trying eh, to address. El otro es and the other challenge is to promote sustainable transition of family farming based on agroecology. We had instruments in the past aiming at supporting agroecology, but not in a uh, clear, decisive way. These programs are, are devoted to uh, uh, these type of development. Uh, we have a positive environment, uh, political environment, so a green government, uh, which is pro-agroecology as part of the platform. The Ministry of Agriculture and uh, INDAPS uh, uh, guidelines are also good drivers. The, we have the SIPAN SIPAM experience between FAO and the Ministry of Agriculture agriculture with uh, INDAP and ODEPA as uh, main coordinators of the ministry, aiming at uh, acknowledging the agri-food uh, legacy of Chile. And in that agroecology, it's uh, critical. So this is uh, fully consistent with agroecology. Stakeholders, uh, what are the stakeholders in, the, in this program? Uh, INDAP at the central level, at the regional level, part of the design through uh, collaborative processes, the, the farmers' associations, so the CAR and CADAS, who offer their feedback and then they also validated the program, INIA, which is another agency of the Ministry of Agriculture with, uh, dealing with the research, who uh, will be executing the program, providing uh, Specialized uh, advising on agroecology through an agreement with the INDAP. They are executing this program. And the INDAP's uh, Sustainability and Agroecology Network, which is the uh, support for this program for proper execution. That's the, the sustainability responsibility. De, those de, responsible de for uh, sustainability Banco, in, the, in every region will uh, liaise with the INEA. And we also have an international collaboration with the IDB, providing with a different view for user characterization and to measure to measure the impact of the program among INDAP's users and family farming. As a whole. So the overall goal is to increase the number of uh, INDAP users at the national level using um, 
using uh, uh, farming systems based on sustainable management and practices. The, the management and perf on, uh, performance, performance assessment will, will be responsible to of in-depth. Execution and the advising will be done by INEAC. What are the strategic axes uh, and or, or the main uh, drivers uh, at uh, tailor-made uh, technical advising? Uh, uh, incentives and, and, and training to enhance uh, these uh, practices. The transition program, it's like a school. Uh, farmers will join, they will be trained as a group, they will receive uh, uh, spe specific consulting or, or advising on these topics. Land, biodiversity, pests, diseases, water, uh, uh, marketing, and, and, and collaboration. This is a two-year program. And at present, uh, we have uh, 1,002 uh, in-depth users that will join the program. And then after two years, another 1,000 uh, beneficiaries will join. This is um, this is a starting number, an additional number. The, the program may be expanded and could uh, welcome more users. We're just beginning, so this is a sort of a pilot experience. Go find the go funding by users is zero, and the coverage is all. 16 regions in the country. The main outcomes or results so far. This is just uh, the, the beginning. This was uh, introduced uh, last, uh, last uh, August. Sorry, the interruption. You only have five minutes uh, to close your presentation. The main results was the implementation of a new user selection system, uh, the evaluation of uh, farm sustainability, and the uh, field uh, records. Uh, that's a different thing, which is the, how we keep a record of uh, agroecological production in family farming. Zoning uh, the program by territories and a method to assess uh, performance of the program which is uh, provided by IDB. Challenges, these are the challenges over and above the transition program. Uh, coordination and cooperation with the various uh, Ministry of Agriculture agencies and from other ministries to execute the climate change adaptation plan, uh, leveraging resources for agroecology projects. So there are devoted resources no for this problem, but they are not enough. We, all, we, we, all, we always need uh, additional resources to expand the impact of agroecology, promote public procurement of agroecological food from family farming to build, uh, to, to grow these demand, and uh, so that more and more farmers can join this uh, paradigm, promoting a, a, a record methods, record keeping methods, uh, and that's um, and, and uh, the last stages uh, are the next steps are to execute regional sustainability and agroecological uh, transition uh, plans. Uh, building regional networks uh, supporting the execution of this uh, plan, the updating uh, of all the program, which is uh, for the recovery and preservation of uh, soil, working with the farmers' organizations for public policy recommendation uh, on agroecology as part of the REAF, this is what we've been doing in the national section, and an agroecological strategy associated with the national uh, family farming plan. Another instruments are initiatives. This is uh, just to show you that uh, besides the TAS, there are other initiatives. The soil program aiming at recovering the potential of soils and preserve them over time through practices 
de conservación de suelo preservation eh, y esta, of, esta, soil. Esta and uh, this program includes uh, technical advising, de, de even for the preparation of management plants. Many farmers are limited de, de in the use no, of these tools no because la, they don't las, eh, they don't have uh, de, the they don't have the way to submit uh, their projects or management plans. So this program will also yeah. support them y on that. Último, eh, And last but not least, o, o, o the eh, in, initiative or, or, or project, uh, the CPAN project. This is an initiative which is very es important. La, digamos, en Chile es la, digamos, la única Because, que, uh, this is que the only one aiming a, directly a, a to the recognition and preservation of our agri-food legacy. Se ha We've uh, worked on two norte, main territories in uh, the high and the territory and in yeah, the Pehuenche uh, territory in the down de south. Norte, in the Andean region, we have a wetlands in the, in the northern, uh, northern uh, Chile, uh, llamas and alpacas and arises, uh, so-called eras. Uh, in southern region, we have a biodiverse uh, family orchards, a collection of um, non-timber uh, non uh, forestry products. Those are important uh, Sites. Uh, so we're working uh, se, se with communities. Y se, y se we try to recognize and make it visible ellos, through different eh, means, including INDAP, the uh, FAOs, and last but not least, the decía, Sustainability eh, Network, which aims at supporting all these initiatives. Uh, aims at supporting them uh, de through de the development of regional networks. Región, As uh, one responsible person for a region, we meet uh, on a monthly basis and we have regional sustainability plans as well as agroecological agro transition. That's what I add for you in Chile from INDAP. There, there, there are other initiatives from, but from INDAP. Those are probably the most critical ones. Thank you. Clara, eh, es Thank interesante you, ver cómo existen estos uh, movimientos claros desde el gobierno para impulsar la agroecología de estos programas uh, que nos mostraste uh, uh, y también uh, algo que tú también resaltas el, el fomento específico de la transición specific, sostenible um, de la agricultura familiar con base uh, agroecológica uh, teniendo su presupuesto uh, propio uh, y también eh, uh, buscando apalancar más recursos para seguir eh, incentivando y, keep, uh, y teniendo más proyectos activos y programas respecto a esta temática muchísimas gracias uh, topic. por tu, um, tu presentación sí desde el público hay preguntas, comentarios uh, if, uh, al respecto, pueden ir anotando y al final de las presentaciones vamos a tener un espacio eh, para que puedan we'll hacer las preguntas a los panelistas, así que Sebastián, si, si te quedas con nosotros también para poder atender a esas preguntas. Eh, así que muchísimas gracias. So Ahora you. vamos a pasar con la siguiente presentación. Está, viene la presentación de Paraguay. Va a estar a cargo de Paraguay, Juanita eh, by, uh, Caballero, que es la presentación de la Agroecología de la Red Agroecología en el Ministerio de Agricultura y Ganadería uh, de Paraguay. Y uh, okay, Juanita, vamos a compartir tu Juanita, presentación. Vamos a compartir tu presentación. Y vamos a compartir slides. Thank you. Tienes 15 minutos y yo te voy a avisar cuando te vayas quedando 5 minutos para ir finalizando when, la idea. Uh, you only Gracias. have 5 minutes to finish. Buen Thank you. Buen día a todos Good morning. y todas. En primer Everyone. lugar, felicitar por esta um, iniciativa congratulations para uh, for this initiative. Congratulations to FAO and REAF Mercosur and the uh, different countries that are contributing and uh, sharing their experiences and uh, knowledge about agroecology, either technical, uh, growers or experts um, 
Especially on the topic, and I'd like to thank the invitation on behalf of the technical committee that promotes organic production, especially the Deputy Minister of Agriculture belonging to the Ministry of Agriculture of Paraguay, because it is the um, Deputy Minister, the one uh, leading this committee on promoting organic production and agroecological production. And I'd like to tell you also that this committee is made up by representatives of the public sector and uh, also of the private sector. So it is in this context, in order to start this presentation, uh, it is clear that uh, the image on the left, it's a store where organic products are um, sold with STT certification. And on the right, you see a dissemination activity regarding agroecology and organic production. Next one, please. Bueno, entonces, en el tema de los desafíos, in terms of the challenges, how, uh, as Paraguay, I believe we can consider um, instrument related to public policy. However, we still have uh, a major challenge of uh, uh, actually imp implementing uh, these instruments and especially uh, having a technical team uh, that is dynamic and committed uh, to working in agroecology. These instruments are uh, the national strategy uh, and the national plan. This plan was developed already in 2008 and uh, and the agreed upon national plan was developed uh, based on the first uh, developed strategy. Uh, and they were developed uh, in a participatory uh, way. Entonces, eh, para mencionar un poco quiénes fueron o quiénes son, quiénes han cooperado, quiénes son los actores. In order to find out who the stakeholders are, not only involved, but, uh, uh, but also committed uh, in all this process that started before 2008, way earlier than 2008. And I'd like to highlight here um, the private sector, such as, for example, the Paraguayan Organic Production uh, Chamber. Uh, also, Paraguay Organico, uh, that is a trade association that facilitates access of uh, growers and producers' organizations into markets. Also, mentioning uh, the rural uh, uh, network and the other uh, NGOs that support uh, this. And that supervise the implementation of these instruments uh, related to public policy that I've uh, mentioned. And of course, um, the private uh, companies uh, that are um, making the economies more dynamic in these territories. Obviously, I should also mention uh, international cooperation. Uh, then FAO joined, and in the last uh, three years, um, other uh, corporations such as the Mission Technica China de Taiwan. Igualmente, quiero resaltar la siempre activa participación de los representantes de productores. 
todos han participado directa they o have all, indirectamente um, en la been involved directly or indirectly in the preparation of these instruments um, como también uh, en el levantamiento as well as in uh, uh, collecting data um, de fomento y aparte de estos dos instrumentos de políticas públicas la estrategia y el plan nacional concertado the con también agreed upon national plan we also have uh, another uh, instrument uh, which is the national uh, program uh, on organics dno recently um, no developed uh, but that uh, has not yet been approved del ministerio de agricultura y ganadería siguiente diapositiva valentina next uh, slide please y en cuanto al objetivo principal y quién está liderando o cuál es la instancia que lidera what is the todo este instance proceso, that is led es el by uh, the process is the technical uh, committee orgánica. that uh, promotes es la organic única production uh, it is the only uh, technical aclaro. instance de but let momento. me clarify Uh, that is developed uh, to promotion and its main purpose is precisely to promote and to advise organic production of the country. Uh, although the, uh, this uh, technical uh, instance uh, is not, uh, that doesn't operate as a cooperative, but it has an annual uh, plan that is specific uh, to uh, foster this uh, topic, such as uh, technical tours, uh, seminars, and field uh, guidelines. Our committee uh, also participates in uh, technical instances such as our REAF Mercosur, the Inter-American Commission on Organic Culture, and the Latin American Network for outreach services that are also interested, this network is also interested in the agroecology topic, coordinated with some of the services, and the We're having active participation in uh, the uh, technical group GT8, Agricultura Mejosur, uh, which will set up a working group to deal with uh, organic production issues and facilitating trade among the countries. So in this regard, uh, I can tell you as well that the latest uh, data collection conducted within the framework of a consulting service that has been also led by an NGO, which is a member of this technical committee, um, collect, conducted a data collection uh, regarding organic production in agroecological And you can see uh, that we have close to uh, almost uh, 39,000 uh, uh, organic and agroecologic uh, growers or producers, uh, and almost 13,000 of those that have an organic certification, and close to 26,000 uh, producers are uh, Uh, working on the agroecology, uh, not necessarily in, in the transition, but already in uh, agroecology itself. At least uh, here in Paraguay, uh, we work uh, um, the organic and agroecologic uh, are working, uh, regardless of the fact that uh, we may have uh, agreements or disagreements um, uh, or because we see that the collective efforts uh, open up opportunities to us. Uh, next uh, slide, Valentina, please. As to the legal of, and the regulatory framework that regulate these uh, Public policy instruments. We have uh, 34. This is a law that Así fosters uh, control. Una this is how uh, a committee has been set up, uh, which is a decree of 45. 
2007 uh, both the setting up of this uh, technical committee público, privado, así como ese plan nacional concertado que he mencionado anteriormente todos estos instrumentos cuentan con una resolución so these instruments have a ministerial resolution estoy, eh, digamos tratando mucho lo que es el fomento la promoción this is, también I'm, quiero I'm que highlighting que si bien promotion no es un and miembro, although digamos, it is not de nuestro comité un miembro de a member of our committee legal, a member from the legal point of view es la autoridad This entity is the one that controls uh, organic controls, and Senave uh, actively participates with us in uh, the meetings that we uh, hold with the members of the uh, promotion committee, because we know uh, that by um, joining our efforts, it is possible to uh, deal with this in a more harmonious way, everything related, for example, to the um, uh, SPG certification. We also have uh, the Paraguayan standard uh, of production. Um, and the uh, recipients of these uh, work are the family farmers, uh, which is the, the, the target group of the differentiated policies of the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock. And next one, Valentina, please. Y en cuanto a los ejes estratégicos And regarding de, uh, the Juanita, strategic uh, sí. pillars, Juanita, excuse me, you have four Están. minutes. En a los okay. Ejes As to the strategic uh, pillars of this uh, national agreed plan, there are uh, seven strategic areas in which mercados, we consider the markets, uh, organizational development, uh, institutional strengthening, uh, research, innovation, and others. Uh, next one. Please, I'm about to finish. Bueno, entonces, en so, a las uh, concretas, as to uh, specific actions that have been developed or that we are uh, supporting either directly or indirectly, we have the SPG that for more than two years has been working uh, to achieve a, a standardization of, of standards with Brazil, for example. We've also worked um, in a certification proposal Uh, uh, we have uh, conducted uh, the, the uh, development of courses for promoters, both in uh, intellectual property and organic production. And what has been uh, conducted uh, in technical group 8. Bueno, realmente, eh, so really, uh, it, it is somewhat uh, difficult uh, to assess uh, social, uh, impact social impact or economic and social and environmental impact that derives from uh, implementing Uh, public policies because uh, we're not uh, doing it yet. With, with all that and in the context of uh, a measure that is called a green competitiveness uh, with the support of Jay-Z, we worked until recently on collective uh, branding, uh, SPG certification and third-party certification. As a result, we then have um, growers uh, or producers uh, associations that have uh, their collective brands, uh, one of them with uh, geographic indications and also with collective uh, brands related uh, to uh, apiculture that was actively developed uh, with uh, the support of GIS. The also, we are working with a, a digitization project of family farming projects uh, with uh, irrigation remote sensing. And recently, we developed a seminar on organic um, production, uh, agroecologic organic production. Next one. Bueno. 
Okay, so I, I think among the challenges and opportunities, first we have the, implement, the implementation of public policy instruments and to keep on working on alliances with the private sector and academia, with the international cooperation uh, organizations. Uh, these uh, spaces are extremely important and quite rich, and organic uh, and agroecologic production undoubtedly contributes to facing uh, climate change. So the next uh, steps that I'd like to share with you in this administration, we are working hard to um, achieve the development of a technical instance that, that works on all these processes on agroecology and organic production. And we believe uh, that we must also insist on the uh, awareness building of high uh, decision making levels. And I'll stop here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Juanita, for being with us today and sharing uh, Paraguay's uh, experience. Uh, of course, it's quite valuable for the region and, and it's a benchmark for many more countries. Thank you, Juanita, for the benefit of time. We're going to go straight uh, to Argentina. Uh, that will uh, be presented by Veronica Lozano. She is a REAF coordinator by the uh, Instituto Nacional de Agricultura Familiar Campesina Indígena from Argentina. She doesn't have a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, she does have a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, perfect. Can you, can you see it? Please let me know if you can see it. Yes, we can see it, but not in in slideshow mode. Yes. Okay. Let me let me. Uh, Ahora también. También lo vemos de la misma forma. Yes, we see the same thing. Ahora se ve bien. Ahora lo vemos sí. perfecto. perfecto. Adelante, Verónica. Yo te aviso cuando queden cinco minutos. Bueno. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, the title of this presentation, uh, Agroecology as a Way, uh, for us, this is a process, a dynamic one, uh, that does not have a, a destination uh, or an end, but it's a it's a means, it's, it's, it's a path uh, in terms of what we want to define as what we expect from agroecology. And in that sense, we believe that agroecology is uh, recovering and uh, the creative act in farming production. That's why we believe it's so important. Uh, not to lose sight of uh, who should be the protagonist of this agroecological uh, process. And in that regard, I should mention that today is uh, October 12th, uh, which we commemorate a historical uh, milestone that marked the destiny of our continent and in the memory of the resistance and struggles uh, that gave birth to agroecology, uh, food sovereignty, and this other possible world I just wanted to mention this, and to recognize, because if we talk about agroecology today, uh, uh, although there was a lot of reluctance uh, and there were many uh, proposals of uh, indigenous of family farming, especially in our continent, uh, that uh, proposes that uh, to uh, work and allows us to be here discussing it today. I'm, I'm, I'm going to emphasize on two specific pillars that we consider uh, key uh, to the development of agroecology and for agroecology transition. Uh, first of all, here in Argentina, uh, 
Uh, we have something that we can, can't escape it, which is um, uh, security and uh, land tenure. And we cannot discuss an agroecological transition process if most of the producers do not have uh, certainty and security regarding that tenure. Secondly, we believe um, uh, uh, seeds without native uh, uh, local seeds. We cannot develop agroecology or to resume agroecology in our continent. So my presentation today will focus on uh, land tenure and uh, uh, native and local uh, seeds in our public policies and how we address these uh, topics that we believe um, are the necessary base uh, for the agroecology process. Uh, of course, we need to mention uh, bio inputs and the adequate etymologies and, of course, a fair trade. All of this in the context of a gender uh, perspective with specific policies for the youth and for women and, uh, and participatory guarantees. Of course, this was the sector that gave birth to agroecology, and uh, the state that has been present through public policy making that has been sustainable in time. First of all, I'd like to talk about um, tenure, land tenure. In our country, we have a historical issue of uh, land concentration, uh, migration in the last uh, 100 years that uh, uh, never stopped, uh, rural migration to the cities. And uh, we, we have very precarious and land tenure in most of our territory, uh, indigenous communities uh, and, pet, and, and farmers' communities. And we also have uh, another uh, major problem. En todo lo que son los cinturones hortícolas, uh, the urbanos, issue of um, uh, leasing or rent, uh, most of the population uh, come Paraguay, from our neighboring countries, Bolivia and Paraguay, and they are in a no very precarious situation that doesn't allow us, for, for, that was a, which is a major obstacle to being able to um, uh, developing agroecology transition. I am showing a drawing by eh, Carlos Julio, que el cordobés, that for us has to do with that, uh, with the roots of our uh, farmers and indigenous families, the territory uh, linkages that are necessary to uh, develop uh, these uh, changes or resuming uh, some of uh, the uh, uh, ancient eh, knowledge in our people. And in that sense, we have tierra, different policies regarding, eh, pol que que regarding the land. One that has to do with um, comprehensive uh, addressing of uh, territorial conflicts uh, with the current state and en, also este solving issues and supporting the families. We have 184 uh, cases that are being addressed and they're being followed up. Lado, On the other hand, we were able to build a georeferencing tool de la de la tierra, de regarding de land tenure of um, indigenous eh, and farmers uh, uh, agriculture país, led by the Science and Technology Ministry of Agriculture Country that opened and tendering process and the Universidad del Centro won or was awarded the project and this tool was developed which is called Stilchet, which uh, Tierra, which is uh, about to collecting all the information held by different Senasa, institutions, eh, either Senasa, la tesis, eh, eh, el RENS, pa, y, y nuestros registros de agricultura familiar para poder uh, eh, to be able to start uh, real developing a current uh, dynamic uh, map in which information can be displayed to improve um, the public policy related último, to eh, land tenure. And finally, we'd like to uh, tell you that uh, based familiar, on our historical uh, this is one of the articles of the law that uh, creates uh, the uh, availability of a land bank to make them available to uh, family 
Nos parece que farmers uh, we're making progress in that and I believe this this can be a before and after in terms of uh, ensuring uh, or providing uh, security regarding land tenure to our producers. The, the other topic that I wanted to mention is uh, uh, local and uh, native uh, seed uh, since Mm. Our president Miguel Angel Gomez Humbert took office. We started working on seeds. We created a program that is called Semillar that uh, tries to add a value to the work of our families, of farmers, in the improvement of native and local seeds. Uh, based on that program, we were able to highlight uh, the current status. So we had information. We had information about. About, um, this native and local seed, we are able to uh, highlight a different uh, aspects, uh, also based on uh, something that we did with INTA, uh, which is uh, the consumption of uh, seeds in um, family farming and indigenous farming. Uh, we know that we have lots, lots of potential. Uh, to develop because um, indigenous and uh, family farming in Argentina uses local and uh, uh, native seeds to a large extent and that um, is uh, the kickoff to start recovering that uh, diversity uh, based on Semillar's work uh, and uh, strong interinstitutional work with INASE which is our National Seeds Institute with INTA Uh, with con, mean seed, with con many institutions de, de we sometimes de planificar nuestras políticas públicas con mucho trabajo institucional. Uh, lots of public policy with lots of interinstitutional work because the sector that we need to work for needs that and we believe that, that is de, the only way uh, for public policies to uh, be preserved in time. So from this uh, process, uh, I like to thank because thanks to a couple of seminars uh, we organize at, as a pro temp Retail of Riaf, we discussed this topic uh, of seeds. We found that uh, Argentina was lagging behind in terms of legislation and regulation on, on local native seeds. We didn't have a definition of uh, native uh, seeds. So, thanks to that process last year, We have a specific resolution for our native seeds, which will allow our family rural indigenous farming, that will allow to uh, trademark to, to reduce to register these, uh, these uh, seeds for, for marketing purposes. We have several registration along the country and uh, we, have, uh, we have high hopes for, before the end of the, for the end of the year. Veronica, you have five minutes left. Thank you. It's another policy in our historical re restoration land is a center for uh, native uh, local seeds. We're implementing six centers throughout the country, supported by the Ministry of Public Works. So we're building these 200 square meter buildings with a lab and different areas for storage and seasoning of uh, family, rural, and indigenous uh, farming, uh, local, and native seeds. This uh, will have a co-management uh, group among the national public agencies, research groups, and the local representatives of, uh, of uh, family farming and local communities. So this is uh, the core of of uh, this uh, program. Uh, we believe uh, we, li we leave co-management, uh, which is critical, because that is uh, recognizing the historical role of farmers in the preservation of uh, seeds.
Bueno, además lo conté, pero también estamos so, haciendo uh, un, we were also, un reconocimiento uh, formal de guardianes y formally guardianes recognizing uh, uh, the so-called guardians of Quería uh, no dejar de, de mencionar que como Let instituto también eh, say that as an institute to back in 2021 y llamamos a we uh, uh, sectores de call upon several agencies and, uh, uh, and, and, and the academia to build a bill. Uh, uh, for promotion of uh, agroecology, which was uh, submitted to the House of Deputies, which is still under discussion, which has not been approved. Well, anyway, uh, well, I will take your questions later. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Veronica, for your presentation. Thank you for bringing Uh, about new topics, uh, topics which are common to agroecology, such as a gender, youth, or bioimpotence, which also supplement uh, what the previous uh, two speakers uh, addressed. So thank you, Veronica. And uh, to uh, stay in the session, to take their questions at the end of the session. Uh, now we'll have the presentation from Uruguay by Federico Sierra with the alternate, uh, alternate uh, focal point uh, uh, for REAF Uruguay in the Ministry of uh, Agriculture in Uruguay. Federico, you have uh, 15 minutes. I'll let you know five minutes before the end of your time. Bueno, ya, ya vemos sí, la pantalla. Este, bien, buenos días a todas y todos. Este, muchas gracias por invitarme a participar. Este, muy buenas las presentaciones de, de las compañeras y, y compañeros este, que me han precedido. Este, y bueno, este, vamos a presentar este, la, la situación de Uruguay. Este, este, bueno, yo lo presento desde la Dirección de Desarrollo Rural del Ministerio de Ganadería, que es, la, que es donde trabajo y es donde está, este, luego lo voy a explicar, donde, está, donde se radica digamos, la Comisión Honoraria del Plan Nacional de Agroecología, del que eh, en un inicio fui secretario técnico de esa comisión, este, hoy no lo soy, este, pero bueno, este, voy a presentar desde la... Este, desde la Dirección General de Desarrollo Rural, si bien también tienen un poco una visión un poco más amplia que es. Bueno, decirles que en Uruguay este, una situación de la agroecología o de la producción orgánica, en un sentido más amplio, hay más de 2 millones de hectáreas de, certificadas como orgánicas y, o agroecológicas, sin embargo, de ese 2 millones de, de hectáreas, que son este, más del 10% de la superficie, superficie del país, es decir, eh, superficie productiva del país, que son 16 millones de hectáreas aproximadamente, eh, básicamente corresponden a ganadería no familiar y es este, certificación de tercera parte para exportación, certificación como orgánico. Básicamente ese es el, es el grueso de la, super, de la superficie certificada como orgánico. Sin embargo... Este, eh, la, también hay este, una, un sector certificado, eh, en realidad había, lo, lo voy a explicar, the certified el area, sistema participativo de garantía, certified de by the Uruguay, guarantee of que, the este, agroecology network of Uruguay, predios, which este, certifies some familiares, uh, family eh, farms, or livestock pero, farms, este, but en realidad, básicamente, son predios eh, hortifrutícolas y de, de granja, fruit, de pequeños uh, animales, básicamente lo que se significa. Uh, vegetable farms, uh, uh, garantía, small farming. Este, dado que los ganaderos familiares uh, this, uh, en general uh, hacen la fase primaria de, uh, de la producción que es la fase de cría uh, y no se venden este producto uh, terminado, they digamos, they do not sell, no venden uh, el ganado de exportación, product. digamos. They do not sell oro, export uh, cattle because these bueno, y, are mainly the task of uh, corporate al, or, or al, producers. 
And certification by 2020 was uh, 133 farms, 115 certified by the participatory uh, center and uh, the agroecology network. Even though the, there was an increase, although there has been a drop in the last few years, I will explain you why. But the Service area remained, uh, remained uh, almost the same. For the evolution of agroecological food, uh, there has been a automatic increase at the national level. Thinking of the domestic market. Donde se vuelca casi toda la alimentación, sobre todo los, los productos. That's de base, uh, especially hortícola o, o frutícola, ¿no? Vegetables or, or, and fruit, fruit products. Diría uh, que, que el 99% es este mercado interno. I would say 90, 99% is domestic market. There has been an, 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 a, a good increase in the demand of agroecological products. Bueno, este. In Uruguay, it's a series of uh, situations. I will not elaborate on all of them, but uh, the status of agroecology today is based on traditional farming. I mean, before the, 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 the Green Revolution, we don't have uh, indigenous uh, production or indigenous farming. I mean, there is some, but it's not visible. But um, many traditional practices have been uh, recovered. Uh, with the growth of agroecology. There has been a, uh, a growth in uh, producers. Uh, there were the pioneers in agroecology, such as the Uruguayan Agroecology Network, starting in 2000, the National Network for Native and Local Seeds Network, uh, the Orchards uh, Network. There is an association of consumers now which was established around 2010, the consumers of agroecological products, I mean, uh, at the academia level, there's been some, there's a history of over 30 years in, in these, uh, these movements that led to the situation we have today. That organization, those organizations from the civil society, allowed for certain achievements, milestones so in terms of agroecology. So in 2008, we have a ministry a decree of the Ministry of agriculture, creating the national certification system for organic and agroecological production, and, and therefore the guarantee participatory system, uh, of the, and this is audited uh, by the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, Civil society uh, continued to organize, uh, demanding uh, the approval of an agroecology law. So in December 2008, uh, a law was enacted that was uh, the general interest uh, and the creation of uh, a national commission and a national plan for the promotion of agroecology. Uh, bueno, rules and regulations hablar, were enacted in 2019. And and eh, nunca processes are not linear. Sometimes there are progress, and there are also some setbacks. In 2021, the, the, the license uh, was uh, repealed. 
Y bueno, y, este, y está en proceso de negociación aparentemente. Uh, 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 a conocerse los SPG to como recognize these SPGs as a certification systems, even though it has continued to work as an internal mechanism. Bueno, un poco los los cometidos de bueno a partir de la ley se crea la comisión honoraria del plan nacional de agroecología. The a, a, a national plan for agroecology was uh, established to la, la, la gestión del mismo, ¿no? to prepare the national este, plan for agroecology and to manage bueno, la, la, this uh, plan. La comisión este, conformada, the se, se committee or, este, as uh, set out by the law, with the involvement of various public agencies, uh, agriculture, uh, environment, uh, health, uh, social development, research organizations, rural training organizations, and civil society organization uh, with a history in agroecology. So in September 2019, uh, the, the commission was established they uh, prepare a uh, first draft of the plan in February 2020. Para la elaboración de ese plan nacional de agroecología, the preparation of this national no plan solamente los delegados de la comisión tiene que ser una una base mucho más amplia. De, de, just the uh, just the delegates are not enough, so we need a much wider de, de base of knowledge, organizations, no agencies. Integrarse en la comisión. Es así que se conforman not, grupos. Not, not only the members in the committees. Therefore, there were certain este, bueno, groups that were put together along various uh, theme lines, and they prepared the plan. Over 100 people working on the preparation of these plans. These uh, groups work on uh, different theme lines, as, as you see in the background. We have promotion of agricultural production, access and distribution of uh, these products, genetic resources, training, research, and dissemination, governance, and social dialogue, which then became uh, communications. Uh, each of these uh, theme lines, a series of programs and projects, which I will not elaborate on. Well, that's uh, the, the, there is a, a, a link you will find in the, in the ministry webpage. You just uh, look up for Agroecology National Plan in Uruguay. This is access distribution, genetic resources, este, formación, investigación y extensión, training, research and dissemination este, comunicación, que and decía, communications que which as I said avanza, used to be governance uh, but now Esto it's uh, communication es, es, this is so because the, the, the first draft was a uh, previous um, uh, administration este, bueno, the government change que, que, this was reframed se, se the plan was reframed was renegotiated in the commission y, uh, with certain este, bueno, difficulties and constraints, but plan, led to a new version of the plan with some uh, changes, si not dramatic este, changes, una, but una uh, still eh, some modifications. Bueno, eh, yo medio rápido, pero bueno, es, How about uh, the, this is. Uh, es eh, capaz que luego en las preguntas se puede ampliar la información. Federico, Maybe we can elaborate on these topics uh, ah, bueno, during the Q&A. Uh, eh, bueno, en cuanto a esta, you have uh, five minutes. Uh, in terms of uh, challenges, encontrado, uh, bueno, uh, este, uh, el principal desafío es la tensión. Number one challenge is the tension among the various ah, perceptions of agroecology. That's the first uh, challenge. There's no agreement, especially among organizations and, and some uh, research organizations and, and the academia. There is there different conceptions and definitions. Uh, seeing uh, agroecology 
just a set of techniques, and uh, including other dimensions, a political, social, and environmental, set, that is a more comprehensive view. And that's the, the existing tension, as seen in the results of the, the implementation of the plan. So, we have a minute uh, budget, uh, 1.5 million pesos per year, that's uh, 30,000 dollars, which is uh, good for dissemination, but not for the implementation, which would require millions of dollars. The commission actually discussed around 15 million dollars just to start the operation. And then there are certain for the promotion of agrological promotion, uh, transition pushed uh, from the ministry, which are not part of the plan, even though they promote agrological transition, they, and they didn't go to the governance of the commission. So there are certain parallel tracks. Uh, what's the, institutional with some actions and the civil society organizations looking for resources from abroad now for the European Union to implement their own actions. So there are some sort of two tracks um, with a little uh, contact, with the lack of uh, training in agroecology and uh, in the different uh, universities, so uh, little R&D on uh, agroecology. We compare the, the, the budget of conventional agriculture and um, agroecology. Things are clear. Lack of a technical assistance. And, and I, I, I never said this, but the, the, the main subject of agroecology in the, in the national plan is family farming, family production. That's set by law. There's also a lack of a proper regulatory framework for production of poultry, uh, small animals. Uh, 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 slow, small scale slaughtering, uh, uh, bio inputs, and there is a lack of uh, political position, a political vision of agroecology as the alternative for sustainability of family production. I would say the only one, but that's my own personal opinion. And there is the development and opportunities. Uh, this is part of the public agenda. Basically, we have 93% uh, of uh, urban population in Uruguay. Therefore, when, uh, when there are some environmental problems affecting urban population, uh, everybody is, everybody is aware of that. We have, of course, uh, water, the case of water, which we run out of water during the summer. Pollution of, uh, of uh, water sources out in the beaches, uh, there are cyanobacteria. And then it, it, it becomes important, uh, the, the questioning of the prevailing uh, model. Organizations of Agroecological producers with a long, long background, long history is a, a critical, a critical mass uh, of agroecological movement, uh, which is growing. Producers, consumers, the academia. There are experiences uh, of many producers uh, in, in agroecological production. This agriculture is quite mature. There is a certain regulatory framework, although insufficient. We have a national plan of agroecology, which is about to be implemented. And there are some uh, developments of uh, uh, agroecological based practices used in agroecology and conventional production, which have been developed, although not implemented as an integrated concept. But these also would be part of uh, the foundation. There's uh, the buildup of knowledge at the scientific and academic level. And uh, the country, uh, Uruguay, has a great opportunity, number one resource, 
is natural pasture, which is the foundations of uh, sustainable livestock, and, and, and there is a huge opportunity for scaling agroecology quite easily. So that's also an opportunity for us. And, and I would uh, finish my presentation here, close my presentation here, but this is a very long topic. So thank you very much. Thank you, Federico. Very clear uh, opportunities that this poses in uh, agroecology and family farming. Uh, many of the challenges uh, are shared with other countries uh, in order to increase uh, budgets that we have addressed in this sector, keep uh, developing regulations, projects, and programs. And I'd like to highlight uh, two topics that you mentioned in the last uh, part about increasing research and technology development and the uh, lack of, of academic uh, training in this field, because one of the uh, core activities in order to link uh, agroecology with the youth, uh, which is one of the questions that we need to address it with our panelists. I'm getting ahead of myself. But thank you, Federico. We are going to go now to the last presentation today. I'd like to offer the floor to Carlos Bermot, who is a technical coordinator of Ecoprofam projects. Um, Carlos, we go ahead. We are going to uh, uh, flip the slides and let us know when to do it. And you have 10 minutes. I will let you know when you have only three minutes okay. left to close your presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for the opportunity of uh, communicating uh, what is the EcoProfam uh, approach in this regard. The presentation has uh, three uh, chapters. The first one, what we call the elements that motivate the transition to agroecology or organic um, farming from the context of family farming. The second chapter, which is limitations for family farming to actually transition um, in that direction. And one last chapter that has to do with the main uh, public policy instruments uh, that, uh, according to EcoProfam, would be uh, necessary in the countries uh, so that somehow uh, the experiences can be expanded and uh, with that to achieve a um, more general uh, transformation of uh, the uh, food systems in the region. Next one, please. Uh, the uh, main elements uh, that at least uh, motivated from the EcoProfam point of view what have been the experiences of developing business plans in uh, organizations that work with agroecology and organic production and, and the reason why uh, uh, family farmers want to share these processes. First one is to have access to a variety of food for the families to reducing the exposure of families uh, to chemical inputs that were traditionally used because we we have seen important health-related issues, especially the more intensive uh, the production is. Um, the need to recover some productive resources uh, that in traditional systems have lost uh, quality, they have been mostly uh, polluted, um, soil and uh, water to lower cost of uh, chemical inputs that in turn, in time, uh, do need to increase um, dosages, and even then they cannot control pests or diseases in a reasonable manner. Uh, the opportunity to value the products due to a change in the conception of the quality of the products that the consumers have achieved, but not only value the appearance, but how that product has been produced. So therefore, there's a, a chance of actually gaining more value. Uh, going back somehow so that those become diversified systems that can face the climatic issues and market issues because of being more adapted to specific areas that in specific conditions um, uh, undergo crisis due to commercial and environmental issues. And finally, uh, something that is also on the heads of producers of authority or starting leveraging um, this in the countries, in the case, uh, some environmental services provided as an additional way of um, creating uh, income for the family. Those would be some of the reasons why family farmers individually or in collective uh, context, uh, this is a way to follow the next one, please. Uh, ¿dónde están las principales limitaciones Where are the... Los los, los y sus uh, para this is some of the reasons why 
Um, en muchos casos le falta un conocimiento concreto de experiencias positivas de implementación de esos sistemas productivos, o sea, tienen el conocimiento de que en algún lado funciona, pero no logran acercarse exactamente a esos casos bien sucedidos, eh, para lo cual hace falta, como mencionaron en las presentaciones anteriores, procesos interesantes de innovación, intercambio de experiencias y formación de técnicos y que efectivamente le puedan hacer llegar a los agricultores que tienen que entrar en estos procesos la give the farmers the uh, information firsthand and also uh, give them some tranquility to actually address the decision. Para lograr que las familias que van a emprender este camino se capaciten debidamente y comprendan en realidad el proceso a seguir, que no es un cambio inmediato, que es un proceso, uh, como ya se dijo, process, varias veces, y que se van a encontrar este, and it's a process in which they will find no, difficulties no sobre las cuales va a haber que trabajar. Y luego hay este, limitaciones. Then there are some Muchas limitations. Veces, como, dijo, aquí, Many times, as we have heard here, both in terms of bedroom material um, or bio inputs that, after all, either uh, no stop or completo, uh, slow down the whole process, um, but also achieving some certification levels uh, that um, uh, guarantee that those products are produced differently. There are problems in terms of quantity, the timeliness of what those services or when those Que se puede the, uh, este, y how veces often el, el you can have access cual, to those at any time, but the cost at which you can get them based on that scarcity. Eh, otro elemento importante es que los Another tiempos de transición no son pequeños. Aún en los casos de sistemas productivos, es not digamos, más rápido, even in the case of even faster por lo menos lo que Coprofama ha logrado trabajar hasta what ahora, que nunca menos de tres años y ha habido que tener cerca de cinco años. Y es más de cinco años, en realidad. Depende mucho de los rubros, pero este, este, son tiempos que son lentos y que... Different industries, but it's, momento, it's a slow timing, and that requires uh, addressing the difficulty in actually eh, building uh, the base for income. There are some requirements in order to uh, systematize the work in the plots uh, and to make decisions, de especially in last stock management, that assumes some investment uh, in order to make sure that these systems actually operate well. Uh, uh, irrigation system sources of water, for example, that are not easy to fund. With the economy of the family farmers, and many times there's the lack of how the sales channels operate. So there's the product produced, but then the value improvement is not captured, um, and that is also a difficulty. Many times, information about what are the next steps in terms of achieving certifications, either through uh, participatory systems or by third parties, uh, that is not uh, achieved easily, and there's uh, an need to work in the system as well. Bueno, and finally, uh, as we know, there's a time in which uh, income is lost because uh, there are systems in which everybody knows, or even though there are difficulties, and there's a learning curve to be addressed. And that assumes a learning both in terms of production and in terms of the trade itself. And that is something that needs to be addressed. Next time, next uh, one, please. Contemplando entonces un poco los elementos Now, que promueven uh, este, la, the elements that promote, la agricultura familiar a, uh, a family farming a de in order to go into these production systems and in turn the issues in, they find when they try to walk down that path. De, what we have is a sort of identification of the things that should be considered in uh, current public policy so that these uh, processes are dynamic with the lowest uh, level of uh, uh, loss of uh, farmers that need to be involved in these instances. First one, I believe, was mentioned several times. Uh, one needs a technical, competent uh, system. There's not an abundance of professionals that are duly trained and that are experienced in these topics and systems. And many times, uh, that those places that need uh, this type of support uh, if they do not trust them and they do not give any uh, guarantees of the recommendation that they are being given, uh, that, of course, has a negative impact on the process. Um, the exchange of experiences between those who did it already and achieved something positive, those who are going to do it soon, is seen as a core um, a tool beyond the existence of a professional, seeing another one as one that already did it, uh, 
Uh, of course, uh, knowing what is the process and where they found the problems uh, and we understand the importance of the support of co-innovation, we need to uh, uh, connect uh, those that did it, they already know the uh, scientific knowledge. It's important to uh, support the, the development of bio inputs and as we heard the availability of quality seeds. This is key because in the end the process needs to be certified on the basis of using uh, seeds and inputs that uh, have the right quality and many times maybe in the biofertilizers the previous example when you want to try to use them there are difficulties even for uh, uh, a formal type of uh, trade because the product is made by somebody but it's not really standardized in terms of how to sell it. This affects all this process uh, definitely. Um, um, one needs um, reimbursable and non-reimbursable mechanisms adapted to the transition process. Uh, these are the investments and that are uh, significant uh, sometimes with a slow maturation process. So it is important to bear that in mind and to um, uh, adapt to the financing tools if, if you want to public uh, procurement somehow those who make uh, decisions regarding the purchase um, recognize the value of different products uh, and it would be very interesting and quite useful and it doesn't assume that the allocation additional budget but they use a different part of the public budget uh, in order to develop production systems that are beneficial for society and uh, the, the paying for the recovery of the soil, water, or the maintenance of biodiversity in fragile environments, which is to be certified, uh, also becomes uh, something is uh, key in the policy making that is not only uh, somehow uh, addressed at recovering family production uh, or the economic effort to develop these new systems uh, through selling products, uh, but also, also environmental services that is provided to the environment where they exist. Participatory uh, certification systems with all uh, the uh, certainties and uncertainties and, um, and uh, formalities that need to be implemented. Uh, they are just as important because uh, many times uh, certification by third parties is uh, extremely expensive and it, uh, sometimes necessary to achieve certain local, national uh, and even regional uh, and maybe uh, a challenge uh, for REAF is uh, to do all that work with, with records and public uh, purchasing is to find a common uh, design base and a recognition that allows the countries in the region to have certified uh, products with low certification costs, opening up uh, 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 marketing possibilities for family farming, not only in the closest market, but within the region. Of course, information and a dissemination of the potential of these products uh, regarding uh, consumption and advantages, uh, uh, products and health, and also the quality of uh, food, uh, but also in terms of uh, uh, school feed programs and uh, uh, healthcare providers and the support to the organizations themselves around which these uh, producers inevitably need to uh, congregate in order to lower transaction costs and, and achieve the knowledge. Uh, that means that the organizations that need support in order to introduce the capabilities they do not have so that uh, their own uh, affiliates can embark on production processes that are more generic of these types of products. Uh, okay, basically, I believe uh, uh, those are the uh, three aspects of the presentation that I wanted to share. And once again, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Carlos, for your excellent, pre excellent presentation. And uh, not only learn what are the challenges or needs uh, in order to promote agroecology and family farming, but also what are the, cha the challenges you recognize from family farming organizations to achieve these uh, successful plans. No, thank you once again for your point of view. Now we will have uh, 10 minutes uh, for Q&A. I have uh, two questions which I would like to ask uh, 
to all the speakers today. First, on what incentives uh, should be given to producers or to encourage the youth to return to the countryside. And the second is many of the presentations um, address at agroecology. Uh, it's a similar to ag agroecology and family farming or organic production. That, but at, uh, in, in the statistics uh, uh, from governments, uh, that, that, that is also true. Juanita addressed that. Uh, those two questions, I would like to start with uh, Sebastian, if you could. Briefly, because we have only 10 minutes, so that you can address this question. Thank you, Valentina. I, I believe that one of the main incentives for the youth is showing them that life uh, out in the countryside is possible through agroecological production. Today, progress has been made. Uh, elements that have uh, improved the life quality in the rural world. That means that uh, the youth will see an opportunity for uh, for development other than the cities. I mean, in other countries in Latin America, as far as I know, we also have this situation not only the Young people que, que, que nacen en el, que nacen en el are y que born in the countryside and, and they want to go to the city, but we also have the other way around. We have en el cual jóvenes, eh, young la people from the city eh, por un, encouraged por by, una, by al, al, al this ambiente, special awareness of the environment and a healthy food and a healthier lifestyle Entonces, they want general, to go to the countryside. So the best que, way to uh, encourage them is that today we have more tools de, de, de live de, de, in the, de, de, in the rural más, area más, through más this type of production, como, como rather una, than a production vida, style, but uh, the lifestyle, it is possible. Que, and that there are lots of stakeholders today being articulated uh, for this to happen. Not only governments, uh, also companies making a, a contribution in this, to this uh, transition process. And of course, farmers' uh, organizations that have a central role without farmers or associations, the social, the social fabric. Uh, will not stand. So it is also important to uh, let uh, young people know that besides aspiring to this new lifestyle, they also have to be part of these territorial governance, which is very important. So that, I believe, it would be interesting that we at, uh, at INDAP, we also have uh, as uh, as uh, uh, eh, as a strategic pillar, working y with the youth, with the young haciendo, people. Eh, We've been, uh, programa, as, uh, as part of our programs, we have uh, targeted uh, de, resources de in support of uh, sustainability jóvenes. projects uh, eh, focused on the youth. Muy buena, muy buena, We've been... Eh, uh, we have been uh, jóvenes, quite son, successful son, in terms of their involvement. Muy, muy, this is a very, a very, there's a highly motivated group by agroecology, and many times it's all the other way around. One may think that the youth are not really interested, but that, that's not so. Youth uh, are, are pushing, are driving this. They're demanding this already, and that means that encouragement uh, for organizations such as INDAP and others in support of agroecology. So thank you, Sebastián, for your, for your answer.
I'm happy to see that uh, you're working on youth and agroecology. Juanita, same a couple of questions on youth and how to encourage producers uh, to go for these practices because agroecology, uh, you, you address that in your, your presentation. If you could uh, uh, offer an answer sí, on the first question, yeah. Carlos Mermot, uh, Carlos Mermot actually answered uh, many of those factors, react, but uh, from dissemination, it is critical to show and to prove. Rural dissemination is fundamental. And for Paraguay, let's just say the producer themselves, they show those experiences, those practices. Uh, uh, agroecology certified uh, or, uh, or, or or maybe based on trust that, that they share those positive and negative experiences because with the negative experiences you avoid making the same mistakes that's how you learn and on the other hand uh, during the pandemic uh, uh, the, 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 the two stores uh, uh, in Paraguay, uh, there was this change, dramatic change in terms of demand from consumers. It used to be old people, 80, 70 years old with some diseases. Now, it's it's young people demanding uh, those type of uh, food. People is in the gym, artists, physicians. Uh, they, 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 we, there, there is a change. There is a change over there, and that's an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Juanita. Carlos, your, your, your hand is up if you want to react to these uh, questions. Please go ahead. It's just a, a, a comment on, on you, which... Simpático, depende cómo se lea. Probably eh, this is not, para, will not sound that nice, but for farmers uh, or, or organizations, which I represent today, the, the disconnection between uh, agroecology and youth, it has to do with the fact that the new production systems are offering the rural youth the opportunity of not thinking on living because there is an opportunity for a better life for them and uh, a better income rather than living there. Sometimes things, uh, we end up speaking the urban, uh, the urban people who want to go to the rural area to do agroecology. For family yeah, farmers, no, organizations, no, no, uh, uh, the, uh, we shouldn't no, believe that we shouldn't no promote that type of behavior, which is not supporting family farming, but it's a different thing. It's repopulate the country where they see here as a business possibility. Now, this is just a new form of life, but not exactly what we are looking for as family farmers. I mean, it's just trying to limit what type of youth are we talking about? Are we talking about the youth which is connected to family farming, which is involved in this uh, dialogue of policies, rather than the just the generic youth? See what I mean? Thank you. Thank you, Carlos, uh, for, for making that point. Which is uh, important. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Veronica, please go ahead. Back to Carlos. Uh, no, we don't have that uh, view. We believe we need to create the conditions so wherever you're born, you can decide where to live, city or countryside, with the dignity. In Argentina, we have lots of experiences with organizations that have supported agroecology schools for quite some time. Probably the oldest is Santiago del Estero, which is over 13 years. It's been th over 13 years in place with lots of uh, young people there, rural and urban young people. 
And uh, in this uh, process of showing a potential path, I, I have two things. Uh, I, this creative act I refer to, I believe uh, one of the most successful tools of agroecology to entice people is to research, test, develop. Of course, GAP a guarantee. We have to guarantee that that sustainably is sustainable from the economic point of view. And yet another thing has to do with the access to connectivity, culture, recreation of youth in the rural environment. Without those rights, without those basic rights for youth, we will, we will not be able to make progress irrespective or fully developed uh, 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 agroeconomic systems. Uh, that, that, uh, that's one of, one of, in Argentina, organic agriculture and agroecology is two different things uh, by legislation. And the other point that here, uh, we, have, we have agroecology in family farming, but in Argentina, uh, upon the suggestion of the Institute of Family Farming, there was a national office for agriculture ecology and then the minister the minister of agriculture decided that uh, decided to remove these from uh, the, the ministry so i mean to, to, to move these into the ministry so as to cover everything so that's the that's the area uh, which is uh, relevant for us Thank you, Veronica. The last panel Hola, member, sí, no, no, Federico. No, it's just I, I believe that uh, youth, I, I would, the succession processes, or re-settlement, if they are not from the, from the rural world. But there, I, I believe you have a, we have a foundation, material foundation. So a material foundation, an immaterial foundation that has to do with the valuing of the society of family farming. It is, I believe, that the, the family farmers sometimes they discourage their children. Entonces, bueno, la base in order to stay out in the, out in the, in the uh, farm. Uh, I mean, we should also contribute to the spirit of it. Uh, I mean, support it on this uh, material foundation, income, not only good incomes, but also, like uh, what uh, Veronica said from Argentina, well, having services and uh, to have a decent uh, live in the rural environment. Not on the first question. The second question that well, here in Uruguay, depending on, on, on the stakeholder, there might be a confusion, sometimes uh, intentionally. Uh, they want to use the, the agroecology for ill-purposed goals, and this misconception of agro, and this concept of agro, agroecology from uh, uh, social uh, social <laughs> movements uh, that involves uh, sustainability and therefore there is a big difference with organic production I mean we have uh, had these discussions in the in, in this uh, network with the organic or agroecological producers but the confusion is so that that decree that which was repealed that ministry resolution which was repealed which removes the powers of the SPG, uh, it refers to organic agroecological uh, production as well as integrated uh, production, uh, which means that there is a big confusion. And, and I, I, I believe sometimes that's because uh, the, the, the people do not know, and sometimes I would say it's also intentional. Thank you, Federico for uh, 
answering these questions. I know we have lots of uh, questions to be answered, but this conversation will continue on the next uh, October the 31st. So uh, one uh, Lautaro Vizcay uh, in, in closing uh, this uh, session. Thank you, Valentina. I'd like to thank Veronica, Sebastián, Juanita, Federico, and Carlos. Thank you. Thank you, Cassio, for joining us. And not even with the possibility of speaking. Well, Valentina, I believe, uh, was a wonderful meeting. This is uh, being recorded. Of course, the agri-food industry cannot change food into an agricultural product. They have tried, they have tried that during the last 20 years. At the end of the line, they cannot change that. They cannot change something into agriculture, regardless of the different organoleptic conditions. But it is no longer easy. I mean, the rebuilding systems of territory, agri-food legacy. So I put, this is one of the big contradictions, and this is an opportunity for development of our family farming. I understand this uh, point of Argentina, which are highly urbanized, 90 something percent in the, the cities, and, and, and very urban, uh, uh, the, the peri urban sector. Uh, they are always uh, uh, been requesting uh, a new system for uh, agricultural production. Uh, the, the, the La Plata and, and many other and many other cases. Uh, I like uh, Carlos. You, you, we, we all agree. On what are the, the tools uh, required? Uh, not only by the youth, but in order to have an accelerated transition, a fast track transition. There are different interests at stake, and that's why we have. This is a, this is a protection of, uh, of the regional consensus involving the technical assistance, uh, the academia, because we have to speed up. 2030 is way too close. We have the, 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 the numbers of uh, malnutrition and hunger are still growing in the region, uh, but the, we have initiatives, we have policies, uh, we, need to, we need to build participatory systems that uh, will protect uh, uh, the region. There are processes and, 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 and seals, but there is a mismatch looking for this, this balance between the regulations and enabling. Uh, it, this is like a, 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 a pressure vessel. There are processes all over the region, but they don't have the budget. They don't have the guidelines. Uh, they don't find the. They don't have the regulations. And associated family farming and agroecology, it's this is uh, this is here to stay because if in this family we have all the stakeholders of agriculture, it's not only the model, uh, but uh, and we don't know if uh, everything else uh, will be sustainable. The world needs more and more agriculture, but uh, but uh, our, our 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 focus is uh, our our family farmers. I, we we we. Climate Climate change uh, is affecting everyone, not only family farmers. We have to clean the territories. We need environmental services. I wrote several things, uh, Casio, for our next meeting, for our next week meeting. And they have some a, a draft of certain guidelines and recommendations. But once again, I'd like to thank FAU. It's wonderful what the platform is doing. And the National Plan of Family Farming, this topic goes through all seven pillars. No, all seven of them. Pillar one of ecosystem, of the policies, all the way down to multidimensionality. So uh, thank you once again, the government uh, and the organizations for your participation. Thank you, Lautaro, for your closing remarks. That is a very good summary of the importance of the discussion today and the next steps. Next uh, October the 31st, we'll have the third session of this series of uh, family farming dialogues. We'll be learning uh, the global experiences. So all of you involved today, of course, you're to 
join that session to continue with this dialogue and answer those uh, questions that went unanswered. Today's session will be recorded in the platform. And so um, you can gain access to it and share that uh, with those that might be interested. So once again, I'd like to thank the speakers today for your presentations, uh, for the commitment in the discussion and the commitment to continue to uh, continue the efforts in this nutrition into agroecology. Thank you and have a great afternoon. See you next uh, October the 31st.